The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you have markets giving back some of the gains of Friday's acceleration into Monday's acceleration higher. We make it to a high last night, about just when the futures close at 5 o'clock touching the highs we had at about 3 p.m. Eastern time at the level we were at at about noon Eastern time. We were up near about 39.80. We're 50 points off of that level right now. You're technically negative 41 points on the session. That's exactly uh, 1.03%, pretty close to 1% in the red for the S&Ps. NASDAQ, growth stocks, negative 1.7%. You get Snapchat. We're going to get into Snapchat in a, more, in a moment. Everybody talking about Snapchat, rightfully so down 30 plus percent. We'll see where it's trading right now. That's hitting all the social media stocks. We'll jump to those as well. NASDAQ 100 off 200. Dow off six tenths percent. You're about 185 points in the red. You get the Russell negative by 14 points. Crude sitting pretty comfortable at the 110 price point. Gold up again, up $11 coming near the highs we had yesterday. Gold at 1859.90. We'll call it 1860. And we jump to notes and bonds. We got a little bit of higher price and lower yield as the 10 year is up 11 ticks to 119.30. We're inching towards a 120 handle on the 10 year. And you jump to the 30 year up 23 ticks right now at 141.01. We jump over to the VIX. The rhetoric last night in the Tigers' den was we've gotten two days of upward action. The rebound from Friday into Monday, that's the last time we got a bounce. It lasted about one to two days. Where's the projection to the downside? And we're kicking things off, folks. Uh, negative 1% right now. Not good news from Snapchat. We'll see if it's industry-wide or we'll see if it's company-specific. A lot of speculation with the way the stocks are getting hit. Macroeconomics is what Snapchat blamed. Uh, and industry, along with macroeconomics, hitting Facebook, Google, Pinterest, the likes, We'll jump into that in a moment. You get the VIX inching towards 30 yet again, 29.24. Okay, Snapchat, here we go. Oh, it's continuing. We're basically at lows right now. You are off $8 on this equity. It was at 22.47 yesterday. Now, you're not going to see this when I put it back on the chart. We're trading under 15 right now. I'm going to back things up for a full context of when they go public. Okay, I believe that's 2017. Remarkable that they've only been public for that time, I guess, going back the monthly. Uh, so five years ago, you're coming right into where they went public, uh, and that is prior to their earnings, folks. You're going to open, as I said, at 15, and you can see you're kind of matching up with the lows that we had towards the end of 2017, towards the beginning of 2018. That's also the same area that you were at coming into COVID. At the end of 2019, you accelerated to a low during COVID of $7.89, accelerated to 83 bucks. You put it back on a daily. I mean, it's been quite an acceleration from the highs of last September. Again, you're going to open at about $15 this morning. And yeah, it's a tough one for Snapchat. We'll get into what they said in a moment. But Facebook, you're down 16 bucks for Facebook, man. You're at 180. The lows recently are 169. There's your action on the snap news down to 177. You're sitting at 180 right now. The pain continues for Facebook. We jump over to Google. Yeah, they're down, what, 100 bucks? Yeah, $100 almost on Google. 21.38 from 22.33. Pinterest, I'm sure, is getting slammed. Yeah, Pinterest down, what is that, 20%, 22.50 to 18.30. So we jump to Snapchat. Uh, social media and some digital ad companies, okay, tumbling, Snapchat issued a warning to investors that it would not meet its own targets for revenue and earnings in the current quarter since we issued guidance a month ago. Did you hear that, folks? Since we issued guidance April 21st, 2022, the macroeconomic environment has deteriorated further and faster than anticipated a month. You're telling me they had no idea this was coming? I mean, yeah, the month has been pretty volatile, to say the least, okay? Things are changing quickly. Uh, but since they issued it, the macroeconomic environment has deteriorated further and faster. The company said 
in an SEC filing. So you got Facebook down, Roku's down as well. We didn't pull them up. Twitter's down as well. They're also going to slow hiring, I saw in there at one point. Not sure if it's listed in this one. Maybe not. Uh, but a little bit of a wake-up call. Now, in terms of, this is the Bloomberg article, okay, talking about you add up all these companies, you're talking about $100 billion in market cap combined between Snapchat alone is going to give up about $10 billion in market cap, a third of their value. Uh, but Facebook, Google, all of them combined $100 billion plus in market cap that you're going to see deteriorate. And a lot of the analysts in here, so this is where you need to make your decision if you're going to be an investor or you're going to be selling it or you're going to be buying puts or you're going to be buying calls or straddles. At this point, our sense is this is more macro and industry driven versus SNAP specific. That's Piper Sandler, one of their analysts. You have a city, city analyst uh, agreeing, slowing macro, impacting advertising results across the broader Internet sector. Although we, we believe platforms more exposed to brand advertising like Twitter YouTube and Pinterest are likely experiencing a greater impact overall. So what happens there? If you're talking about brand advertising, you're talking about the ability to advertise for brand awareness without needing performance. And maybe that's where the likes of Twitter, YouTube and Pinterest uh, are more volatile is what they're saying. Yeah, and Snapchat's always a tough one, man. I use Snapchat occasionally. Even friends on there, but I kind of don't ever understand the attractiveness of buying ads on there, considering the moment I see anything resembling an ad on Snapchat, all I'm doing is pressing the button, um, the screen to the right side of the page to get fat through it as fast as possible. Now, the one thing I'll say is there's a lot of talk out there on the Internet, the Tiger's Den, everywhere. My friends are chatting about it on our group chat this morning about the insider sales going on at this company over the last couple of years, etc. Evan Spiegel, the CEO, along with many equity executives selling. Uh, those sales, a lot of them having to do with reportedly planned sales from the executives. Let's chat with my dad this morning. It'd be interesting. If anybody knows, um, are those plans public when they get put in place. I know all the sales become public the moment they make them, but is the actual plan that is put in place public prior to the sales? I'm not sure that's the case because then you might be able to front load um, the transactions that you know are coming down the line. I'm not sure. I know they're made public. I know that that's something that needs to be filed, but is it public? If it is, I would be very interested because you know, I said myself, folks, yeah, there's nobody that knows an ex a company better than the executives on the inside. If you know that the company had great things going, if you know that growth was kind of coming down the line, you were confident that it was coming down the line, you wouldn't be selling that much. The other side of that is for some of these growth companies, it would be foolish for some of the executives not to diversify their wealth once they reach a certain threshold and level. I mean, you have executives with millions of shares at 80 bucks, that's talking about $160 million of wealth. At 15 bucks, you're talking about 30 million. And as remarkable as it is, and 30 million, even after taxes, you're set for life. Uh, but it's not 160 million, man. And when you're talking about growth companies, I mean, you saw Zoom. They did it. You know, you got to pay attention to these to a certain degree. Because uh, the Zoom executive was selling as well, man. Everyone's always a genius after the fact, folks. Many companies have those plans in place. So I wouldn't put too much into it. There's a lot of details that go into it. Stay tuned. We'll be coming back with our man, Kevin Hicks. We'll be right back. of looming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back. We got the S&Ps, folks, negative by 38 points right now. We have the NASDAQ negative by 193, the Dow off 167. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, on the TD Ameritrade Network right here on Tiger TV at noon Eastern time. Fast Market with your host, Kevin Hicks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network. They walk you through the day's market action, folks. Break down hypothetical trades. You're talking about options. You're talking about defined risk in every trade that they set up. Kevin Hicks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. This is going to be an interesting day <laughs> with uh, several news stories filtering through the markets. You know, it's interesting. You fought yesterday and the earnings after the bell and Zoom video and Best Buy and even stocks like Ralph Lauren this morning were going to provide some bumpy waters. But a lot of traders didn't see Snap coming out of nowhere to uh, jolt the markets with some bad news. So I think there's a lot of traders frustrated on desks today going, really, it's Snap that's going to upset my day today? <laughs> so that's pretty interesting. But that, that warning was... A couple things. It was significant, and it was significant how quickly it seemed to show up for them. So, but Zoom, better than expected earnings. Uh, Best Buy, sales, same store sales, better than expected. Ralph Lauren is higher, but Snap is going to hurt. And, you know, it's going to hurt Facebook. It's going to hurt Pinterest. It's going to really be interesting what it does to Twitter and the prospects of that takeover deal. So there's a lot going on, but this week, Tommy, is back-weighted, as you know, with economic data, Fed minutes tomorrow. So this is going to get interesting, but we're really watching, Tommy, for your viewers. It's really interesting to watch the U.S. dollar, and I think that is what is very carefully and slowly firming up this market is the correction or off its highs trade in the U.S. dollar, Tommy. Yeah, so back to Snapchat for a second. Uh, great analysis yeah. as usual, Kevin. Uh, remarkable. This I, I talked about it very briefly at the beginning of the program, but I said uh, their guidance was April 22nd, I think. You're talking about yeah. barely a month, um, four weeks to change dramatically. Uh, they had to see something in that data, man, over four weeks to, to come out so strong and the market a little worried. But I agree. I mean, I, I was saying, Kevin, I... 
I use Snapchat in the most limited capacity, right? I have friends on there. Occasionally, somehow you're chatting on there. Somehow you're chatting on Instagram. You're chatting on Facebook Messenger or you're texting, right? And occasionally you're chatting on Snapchat. And I have no idea how they make money, man. Now, I know they have followers, but maybe it's not as industry-wide because I always kind of struggle to see how ads there. Now, brand advertising obviously plays, but I'm clicking that button as quick as I ever can on Snapchat, man, because everything is so meaningless when it comes to ads. Uh, nonetheless, you know, it's going to hit because they're talking about uh, slow down advertising and their advertisers are advertising on the other social media sites. You talked about the dollar and you've been talking about when you've been coming on, Kevin, you know, what if yields are sitting kind of where they are right now, maybe in what is it, you know, six weeks, eight weeks, a couple months from right now. And we now have the 10 year. We're at what? One nineteen thirty. I'm going to pull it up on a thinkorswim platform on a daily basis. You're sitting where we were. April 11th. So we're a solid six weeks out from where we were. And we're talking about a yield of about 2.8%. That was rising above three at one point. Um, give us your take on how maybe these note markets might be settling a bit. And if that's playing into what you're seeing in the dollar index. Yeah, I, I believe that, you know, a lot of the correction that we've seen in terms of rates, remember, uh, the 10 year yield is at 2.8%. Well, the Fed funds rate, all they're doing is raising the Fed funds rate up closer to where the 10-year yield is. The benchmark for interest rates in the United States and in Europe is, is, is the 10-year yield and its relationship with the 10-year boon out, out, of, out of Europe. So those are the rates you should be watching. Remember, what the Fed funds rate is, is just the overnight rate that banks loan to each other. So that rate is really playing catch up with our 10 year yield, which has corrected enormously over the last year, as you know, from down from 1.1% where it was last July to 3.1%, now sitting around 2.8%. So, you know, the Fed fund, the, you know, the, the, the 10 year yield and the 10 year note, corresponding 10 year note, has done a lot of the work for us already in higher interest rates. The question is, we live in a trading world, though, Tommy, where, you know, we get overbought on the upside and oversold on the downside. Electronic trading is taking these quicker and faster to different levels. So it's not surprising to me that the 10-year yield is settling in here at a rate less than 3%. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. You have the dollar index, right, was going up to about 105. You're under 102.50 today. And I have the chart up of the 10-year, Kevin, on a weekly basis on the Thinkorswim platform. Um, and you mentioned the 10-year. So is that 1.1% about it was at at that July kind of um, high in there, which is remarkable, right. Kevin, that that's not even the low where the 10-year was when you look at the depths of COVID of 2020. You had a 140 price point on a couple occasions. You reached about 135 uh, the high in July of last year, you make it down to 117, man. Um, and we're sitting at 119 and change right now. So it'd be interesting to see where that does settle. And we have a bit of a bounce. We're up almost three points from the lows. And, and over that time, you've seen the dollar index trade down a few points um, from 104 and change to 102. So with that in mind, Kevin, you mentioned we got Fed minutes tomorrow. We got plenty of earnings coming down the line this week. What are you guys talking about at Fast Market coming up at 12 today? Fun show for you today, Tommy. First, we'll look at Snowflake on an earnings play. Then, uh, like Foley, will do a presentation on Dick Sporting Goods. They have earnings coming up. And then in the final segment, we'll stay very current and look at Facebook and, and it's it, how it's trading today. So three good names today, two earnings play and, well, something in the news with Facebook. Yeah, Dick Sporting Goods, man. They were a uh, a big winner during the pandemic from 13 bucks to 147. I remember telling the story, Kevin, when COVID first hit, uh, I think maybe May of that year, maybe it was Mother's Day. I can't remember. I was trying to buy sneakers for my fiance at the time. And for the first time, this is super early, right? Now we know the world's changed forever in terms of, but I, I did the order and pick up uh, sitting outside in my car. And I couldn't believe that they brought out a pair of sneakers like they bring out an Outback Steakhouse order sitting on the curb. Uh, and Dix was rewarded, man, up to 147. But just like that, they've given back half of the price down to 73 bucks. And like you said, they got earnings coming out this week. And we jump over to the Analyze tab. And they're looking at, Kevin, a $9.97 move as of the close yesterday. So almost a $10 move on a $75 stock. What do you think of some of the 
the volatility premiums in general on some of these equities. Zoom yesterday, I think you had a $20 move for a $90 stock, and it almost moved $20, Kevin, on the number, pulled back a bit. What's your general take on kind of some of the volatility on some of these equities? we got about 30 seconds left in this segment. Yeah, Zoom got up to 107. <clears throat> I mean, um, Dick Sporting Goods is much more than 10% expected move. The moves are getting big. But then again, Tommy, you've got a VIX around 29. So yeah. not really surprising that some of the moves are big. Um, yeah, this is a going into summer. This might be another fun summer to trade with high volatility, Tommy. Folks, as an options trader, man, Kevin, your program, um, you got some volatility premiums. Whether you're selling them, whether you're buying them, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting, man, as we say. Kevin, we appreciate the time as always, man. We'll be watching at 12 today. Have a great one, brother. Have a great day, Tommy. You too. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back for the opening. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Markets are open. You have the S&P opening down just 1% right now, negative 40 points at 3930. You get the NASDAQ 100, negative 223. You're off 1.9%. We'll jump around to some of the FANG stocks this morning. You get the Dow off 160 points right now, trading at 31,693. Let's jump around to the stocks we were talking about. We'll kick it off with Snapchat. 35% gone overnight. Quite a hit, man. Uh, you jump to Facebook. You're down 7.7% right now. You jump to Google shares. 6.2%. That's put that's putting some impact in the Nasdaq 100, Facebook, Google, Mammoth companies. Uh, let's jump to Twitter. As Kevin said, how's that going to hit? What's going on with Twitter? Down 2.8% for Twitter shares. Pinterest is always volatile. Man, down 18% for Pinterest shares. Uh, 
yeah, we'll see how this one plays out, man. But tough go around. You jump to the flip side of it. Zoom shares. You're up by 5% right now. Now, they had some strong numbers, man. I mean, you come in with these numbers and you're only up by four bucks. I mean, you were barely positive. Now, the market is negative by a percent. You got Zoom up by 5% right now. You jump to where 91.45 Zoom was trading at in the pre-market. You're trading at 93.10 right now. You take a look at their numbers, man. Strong, strong numbers considering what they've been announcing. Uh, company reported five straight quarters of triple digit revenue growth during the pandemic, but expand expansion is now more challenging. Bottom line is 103 a share versus 87 cents revenue in line as well. Um, for the second quarter, they now expect 1.115 to 1.2 billion. That'd be growth of 9.2%. Market was looking for 1.1. So a slight beat there. The company anticipates earnings per share in the range of 90 to 92 cents, higher than the 87 cents the market was looking for for the full year. They expect revenue of 4.53 to 4.55. Market was looking for 4.55. Pretty close. It expects earnings, though, from 370 to 377. Market was looking for 353. So it looks like Zoom, at least, is not getting hit in terms of the earnings front, in terms of spending too much money to make the money you're making, plowing through your earnings, like the retail stocks, Amazon, Walmart, uh, the social media stocks today. Strong numbers on a stock that's been disappointing for the better part of a year, if not longer, and they are barely positive, which says a lot, folks. Now, I say barely positive, yeah, you're up by five bucks, okay? But you're trading at $94, and this thing was at 588. This thing was at 400 less than a year ago. So yes, you're up 5.3%, uh, but boy, there are some serious headwinds for even stock, stocks that are reporting strong numbers in this economy right now. All right, and I think we have a caller. Who do we got? We got my dad. What's happening? Good morning. What's going on, Tom? How you doing? What's, I'm doing good, man. How you doing? Good. You know, when I was listening to you talk to Kevin Hinks, right? Yes. This is pretty weird, man, actually with Snap, because I believe you said that the last guidance was April 14th or 15th or 17th April or something, April 22nd, right? I believe. April, so barely a month. Yeah, so watch. The uh, like, numbers they come out with is the first quarter, which is January, February, March. So it's like, you know, what's really going on with the company? Because when I was listening, I, I looked at this this morning, and they were blaming inflation. They were blaming, um, they were blaming things that I could understand, you know, if you're – a company that, you know, is selling food, is selling something like this. But they're a platform, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, okay, yes. where's the inflation inside the server market? Um, you know, so there's, I mean, I, I can see when you're talking about the advertising. There's a problem there, man. It's a big problem, too. I mean, you know, just financially, I think. Meaning, you know, if they, if the, the earnings were for the first quarter, they come out in April, they knew what was going on, you know what I mean? So it's going to be intriguing. And I suspect what that's going to be, which I said to you when we were talking a little bit earlier, that snap, if you look at that snap, folks, okay, it's breaking a B point. It looks like it's going to be an ABC down to $9. So this thing's not over for snap either, which is pretty wild. Yeah, and it's continuing to drop as they open, man. You're down 37% right now. You're basically making lows as we speak at $14.10. So they're not stopping selling it. Um, and yeah, they 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 say been here, man. The quote, uh, April twenty first is the exact date. Okay, so that's when they had their last earnings. Uh, the macro since we issued the macroeconomic environment has deteriorated further and faster than anticipated. And then you have analysts in here. You have one in Morgan Stanley analyst. I'm just reading a CNBC article, but talking about uh, that they expect online ad platforms to feel some impact. Uh, as advertising is cyclical, and if they're getting hit, man, everybody's going to be getting hit with the advertisers yeah. they have. Wow. So, I mean, the, now, yeah, you know, no there's doubt. some great conversation in the den saying that, you know, Snapchat will probably cease to exist at some point, and I, I, I would be hard to argue against that, as in, do they really, and as we speak, it's now with a 13 handle, um, and the market's trading lower, too. You get the S&P's almost negative by 50 right now. Um, Let's just see how Facebook and Google are trading because they're really getting hit as well. Facebook down 7.6% and Google down 5.8% right now. Um, yeah, that's Snapchat, I mean, the, yeah. It's just it's, it, everybody's going to get hit for sure. But if I was going to be buying any social media companies on this pullback, it wouldn't be Snapchat right now because on a longer term basis, 
I don't know if they serve a great purpose. As in that that space is so hard anyway. When you got new companies like TikTok competing, etc., um, and then you're competing with Facebook and Instagram and the likes of it. As in, I just you know I use face uh, Snapchat occasionally, man. I I I just. I don't even enjoy it practically. Like sometimes there's stories on there, right? And I don't even know what I'm trying to look at or it's weird. You know, it's it's a weird Yeah. Anyway. Um and the ads. Well, you know it's amazing. Some- so so at every pullback that a, that like something like this, okay, and this is a major pullback, you know, that you can really you can relate to I'm a, the, the two thousand pullback, the dot com deal. Um there'll be plenty of companies that are out of business that we won't eat well, you you might hear from again but they're going to be companies that are going to trade to two or three dollars for you know until they go out of business. Uh, yeah. They don't go out of business, but that's it. You know what I mean? It's like wow, man. I mean, because it seems that you know in the tech stock, it's, it's a normal deal. When you run them up, you run them up in an incredible way. Um, and and what other type of business can you have and lose money for so long? And and your yeah. your market cap keeps getting higher, right? I mean, right. it's like right. Uh, it's, yeah. It's, if 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 people were buying a business on Main Street, they wouldn't pay the amount of money that they're paying for some reason for public companies. It's, it's always intrigued me that if you, a company is in front of you and you know it's doing good, but your multiples are never the same as a public company. You know what I mean? So it's, oh, never, and then when they implode, they implode in a monster way. So I mean, how about Rivian? Intense. I just I just pulled up Rivian. They're down four point five percent today, just because it's probably such a volatile stock with how the economy is trading right now. Um, but Rivian, we're always joking, right? And I guess we should have been paying attention, man. When you have companies getting pushed out with a market cap of eighty to a hundred billion dollars before they start making any products, that's 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 kind Seriously. of a, a lesson to us all of of um, probably getting ahead of where the market needed to be on a stock like that. Even if they're going to change the future, man, um, let's let's have them make some cars first and push them out before they're worth a hundred billion dollars. Right, because you have to make money to stay in business, and and what happens in a in a atmosphere that we have right now, it's going to be a lot harder to basically yeah. go to market, you know, to get bonds to you know sustain sure. yourself. Like yesterday, I heard you talking about Elon Musk. You know that I mean, he's no fool. He's going to market right now with SpaceX for like one point seven billion dollars or one point yeah. five billion, some big number. Yeah, um, because that's. And it's still pitch up. He'll still be able to get it, you know. But uh, Rivian's and all these other weaker companies, they're going to be different, you know. And then, it's tough. You know, Rivian so it, will it, probably be all right because they it, got it, Amazon. It, it, I'm sorry. Rivian here. Hang with us for two more minutes after the break, all right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We'll be right back, folks. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. 
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P's negative by 50 points right now. We're on the line with my dad, and we're talking uh, some electric vehicles right now. We were talking Rivian. So I was saying, Dad, that it's pretty interesting. Amazon, though, hasn't sold any shares yet of Rivian. So I know they're talking about it in the den. I'm saying, you know, um, you go to market, and there's plenty of companies that hadn't made money, right? The difference, though, is that when you're putting a valuation on that company, it can vary so greatly when you're not even making a product. And that's the scary part, that you come into this at the end of a 12-year bull run. They go public in, what is it, November of 2021. Um, and, I mean, talk about writing a history book, right? Of course you go public if you're a $100 billion company and you haven't even made a product yet in November of 2021 at the end of a 12-year bull like run. That's the peak. Right. I know. Exactly. That's like the peak yeah. of the marketplace. I mean, when you when you yeah. look at the market, when you start looking at charts, folks, okay, you're going to see November is really the peak. I mean, it's yeah. like a, it's amazing, actually. I know. You just can't do that about hitting it right in a bear Whoa, market. Man. Can you imagine if they tried to come to market right now with those types of valuations and they didn't even make a car yet, let alone any money? We all know how that would exactly. go. They, I mean, they'd probably yeah. be lucky to even get it off at all, let alone um, with a price of 26 bucks right now. But in the long run they'll probably be okay. They're a great company. You can be a great company with a great product and you haven't even made any money yet, but you just got to be careful of the valuation. That's a lesson, folks, because Amazon hasn't it, sold any shares yet. And so that's kind of the cool part if you're thinking of being in this equity, but I'd still be careful because you're down 4.2% today. So you're dealing with some volatility. Because yeah, what I'd say is that the Amazon Revian deal, that's almost like part of their business, meaning of their future business. That's what they're Definitely. figuring. So that's a little bit different, you know, and, you know, as to pullbacks, I said, if I've learned anything, and this was from the Amazon deal in 1999, this is, you got, if you're looking for good stocks, I, I mean, Amazon went down 90%, man. Yeah. 90%. Yep. <laughs> it's like, okay. You know, so, you know, that can happen, but if you're a cutting-edge company, you know, Amazon ended up doing it. Um, I just zoomed in on the Amazon chart. Amazon chart, it's a total mind-blower that actually went in. down 90%. And then, That's, of course, I just it zoomed takes in on the, the world after that. I just zoomed in on the chart back from basically just from 1998 to the collapse into 2001. And it's right. wild, man. You'll have to pull it up on your program because it goes from $8 and change in 98 up to 110 bucks in 99 pulls all the way back to $41 in 99 in, in August of 99 makes it all the way back up to 1 113 in December of 99 and then the whole next year goes straight down to 10 bucks um, over the next year from 110 and now we know it's straight at 2080 bucks even right now down from 3700 so pretty not a lot of people remember that because it's been a bull run for Amazon over the last, what, 10, 15 years or something like that. Right, right. Yeah. No, there's, no, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. You know, but, but I agree. That's, I mean, they're, they're diversifying to make sure, man, that they can have the vehicles needed when everybody wants an electric fleet of vehicles. And, and they're going to make sure that they have 100,000 Rivians. I think they signed another deal with one of their competitors, right? That hit Rivian when it was revealed that Amazon has another stake. But all it means is they're making sure that it's worth it to them to, to have the fleet in five or ten years. When every 
delivery company or business is going to want to be able to have a fleet of electric vehicles that can deliver their products, man, whether it's drones, whatever it is. Uh, yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's not only the way we're going, it's between the electric and then between just the no one driving them, you know, autonomous exactly coming at you. I mean, and, and you can imagine the amount of money that, Actually, those those companies would say it was gonna it's gonna be huge. It's gonna be oh, absolutely huge. Sure. And now, what's you know, crazy is Amazon. See- I was just gonna say, check it out. So Amazon on a monthly, going back to 2018. All right, the high in 2018 was 2050 and 50 cents. So called 2050. We just came down to a low of 2048 on this month, touching remarkably September of 2018. So almost going back four full years for Amazon. Um, we'll see if that's where it holds, man, you know, but quite a pullback. Well, you know, when you talk uh, like anecdotally for Amazon, uh, yeah, the day before yesterday, right? Sunday, we're drinking some champagne yep. and we needed champagne glasses, right? So I went on Amazon, right? Bottom line, you know, I wanted some nice glasses, but there's all different kinds of glasses. The cool thing that, I mean, I know we all know this, but in this case, the price differential was so amazing. So... Waterford glasses, they were looking, I was looking at all the different ones. Bottom line, there's four glasses, and you had prices like from $49 up to 100 and something for four glasses. Well, I got the $49 ones, right? They're amazing. So Waterford has like a different, uh, it's, it's a different, uh, probably a company, but it's made by Waterford. We got them last night. They're amazing. And I was, lo- yeah. I was looking, I said, the bridge, I said, I don't believe, I said, look at, how fast we can find out where everything is. And in this case, because probably it's not like buying a pair of pants, it's real, you know, competitive. It wasn't yes. as competitive, but guess what? I get great glasses for 50 bucks less or $30 yeah. less than every other price out there, man. It was like, and got them delivered, of course, the next day. You know, so and listen, like, I yeah. have Amazon retirement account. You're getting a little bit of the bull case, but I was saying to my fiance the other day, right? So we order sneakers for Tommy, right? So he, uh, yeah. Stride Right, has some great kid shoes, especially he's got some big old feet, man. So he's got some wide feet. So we get him <laughs> the, the wide yeah. shoes, which Stride Right has. Just like and his old man. <laughs> that's right. So uh, there are some Stride Rights that are available on Amazon, okay, but not as many, not as many options is if you just go to the stride right site itself okay so yeah. when i'm going and I'm, when i'm almost buying anything i say to myself can i just go to amazon and buy that product which is surreal when you think that stride right has their own website right. they're probably making more money if you just go get people to go through themselves versus running it through amazon um and yep. then but the service is always so poor so i'll walk you through what it went with stride right real quick and this happens across the board my fiance, she said, of course, you know, I always try and see if I can order it through Amazon because number one, if you're a Pride member, you get free shipping. So I'll tell you what happened. So we wanted to get him shoes. We had a weekend coming up. It was Thursday. I found a couple pairs I liked. They offered overnight shipping. I think we were doing something on Saturday. I said, maybe they'll show up. If they don't, it's not the end of the world. Got two pairs of shoes. They're like 50 bucks each. And because we had an event on Saturday, I said, okay, maybe they'll get here. But it, it was weird. They had overnight shipping which was $24, folks, okay? But then it said one to three business days. So that's kind of a racket, right? One to three business yeah. days for their $24 overnight shipping, okay? So I said, what the heck, I'm gonna try because even if they get it out today, maybe it shows up Friday, it was like one in the afternoon. Maybe if they get it out Friday, overnight gets it here Saturday by two or whatever, maybe it happens. If it doesn't, the shoes are great, not the end of the world, right? So what happens? When do the shoes show up? They show up on Tuesday. <laughs> and wow. I and I was like, what is going on? And and I call and they they were giving me nothing of it, man. No, no way they were giving me back shipping, nothing. And I said to them, listen, you guys are crazy if you think I'm paying $24 for something that you call overnight. It takes you three days to process it. What, what company can process an order? You're telling me that I'm doing direct orders from you on a Thursday and that order isn't shipping. Number one, it should be shipping on Thursday, okay? Right. It, it should at least right. be shipping on Friday. And they say to me, well, sir, we're closed on the weekends. So what is going on, man? But, I mean, that's a normal yeah. thing for companies. You know, like Stride Right is failing miserably. Yeah. Like, it's very difficult to compete with companies like Amazon. Even Walmart can barely compete. So, you know, in the long run, right. 
yeah, it's it's a tough deal for those competitors, and Amazon has well, an edge. All right, well, thanks for calling in, man. We'll be looking forward okay, to the program you, at 3 o'clock. Have a great one. Talk to you later. Love you, man. Okay, okay bye-bye. Talk to you there. Bye. We'll be right back, folks. Folks. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by 52. You got the NASDAQ, man. You're talking about negative by 2.5%. Let's jump around to some of those stocks with action this morning, man. You have Snapchat down 40%, folks, 13.54. Uh, the day is young, as our man Basil Chapman says. Coming up next, we jump to some of the other social media companies. Facebook, 9% hit. <whistles> All these social media companies. Now Pinterest, 21%. Google, 6%. Facebook, Google really hitting uh, the NASDAQ 100, I imagine. Twitter, only down 2.2% for Twitter shares. All right, so we got Davos going on uh, these few days. And I'm going to jump to a comment from the co-CIO of Bridgewater. So Bridgewater Associates, one of the smartest firms out there, Ray Dalio. I think they're firm. They have the numbers down here. What are they up? They're up. Let me see what they're up. Yeah. So... The world's largest hedge fund firm runs Pure Alpha 2 Fund, which jumped 26.4% through April this year. Folks, that is staggering. Now, here's what you have is you have, let me scroll up to the top to get the exact uh, person this is here, Bob Prince. Okay, so I believe he's co-CIO. And getting into his quote here, we could very easily be into this very quickly. That's Prince, co-chief investment officer alongside 
Ray Dalio and Greg Jensen said on the prospects of stagflation. We could very easily, folks, it's not hard to imagine, okay? Imagine that you start hiking rates, right? You have the economy slowing down. And meanwhile, there's such supply chain issues going on that the people with the actual goods are still saying, give me more money for those goods, regardless of what's happening to rates, right? I'm not saying it's going to happen, but you better be aware that this volatility could persist. And when those supply chain problems go away, maybe then they go away. But rate hikes might not solve that problem. You saw some of that yesterday when we were talking about Stiglitz, the Nobel laureate out there, um, saying that supply chain was the issue and that the Fed doesn't need to crush the economy to bring down inflation because that might not be the issue. Pay attention to those factors as we go into uh, a potentially volatile few months, if not uh, longer than that. We get Fed minutes tomorrow, folks. We get the markets down 60 points right now. 39.12 in the S&Ps. You're coming down to the area we were at pre-market. Interesting area. We're going to hold. We'll find out. NASDAQ 100, well below that level, folks. We just dropped 150 points from the open. Stay tuned. Basil's up next, folks. Have a great, have a great Tuesday, folks. Thanks for tuning in.